So on Monday this week, Microsoft unveiled some pretty major news at their Build 2024 keynote, which is funny because usually it's a pretty nerd-focused conference focused on developers and the Windows and Azure space. However, since Microsoft's been working so hard on their AI co-pilot, they use this conference as a natural segue to unveil their new line of Surface devices powered by ARM processors, as well as their partners Lenovo, HP, Acer, Asus, Dell, and Samsung, all sporting snazzy new Snapdragon ARM processors. So why is this a big deal? Well, as many of you know, for the last 30 or so years, Windows has run almost exclusively on Intel and AMD, at least run well on Intel and AMD, which was great until Apple decided to port macOS to their own line of silicon processors in 2020, which happened to create a pretty massive competitive edge over Windows. One of the biggest parts of that competitive edge is definitely the battery life that Apple is able to achieve on their laptops that are running their own silicon, because the battery life is usually like 14 plus hours, whereas my Intel-based Surface only gets about five. And that's just because ARM-based processors tend to just sip power and steer toward efficiency over heat, which Intel and AMD tend to suffer from. Now, power efficiency and battery life may not mean a lot to you until you consider what our computers will need to do in the coming years, which will be fairly intensive AI tasks that will help speed up our everyday workflows. It might not be as invasive as we think it's going to be, but I've got a pretty good feeling that we're going to have at least some efficiency gains from all these AI tools that are coming out that you'll probably be expected to have on your laptop from your employer, given that it would be slower to not do it the AI way. Just a thought, but people tend to like faster speeds of getting work done, especially considering all the AI improvements Microsoft's already baking into Windows in this first round of updates, which includes Recall, which basically lets Copilot look at everything you can see on your computer so that you can ask it who posted that meme two and a half weeks ago. I'll probably be turning off Recall for privacy reasons, but you know, maybe it'll be a useful feature. But other AI features Microsoft's baking in like enhanced image and video editing, live captions, AI upscaling of certain games and more could easily slip into our new standard of computing we'll come to expect in the future years. Running those AI tasks on your current computer is certainly possible, but you'll probably get a pretty rough experience unless you've got a pretty beefy graphics card or very optimized modern CPUs. But even then, the new bar that Microsoft has set for being able to run these AI-powered Windows experiences is for a processor to handle 40 trillion operations per second, or TOPS, which I don't believe Intel and AMD are currently able to hit, but Intel did tease earlier this week that they are planning to unveil something that could fit the bill, so we'll see what that's about. But from Microsoft's standpoint, you're going to be hearing the term NPU a lot more. So your CPU, GPU, and your NPU, or Neural Processing Unit, you're going to be hearing that a lot because Microsoft is trying to smash all that down into one chip, being the Snapdragon processors that can handle your everyday tasks, your gaming and graphics needs, as well as your AI-driven tasks so that they don't have to bother the other two with all of the AI fanciness that they want to have running right on the device. Which I'm not arguing with because if we're going to be doing even some AI tasks in the coming years, I'd rather be able to run on my device instead of always sending it over the internet to some mysterious server where they can harvest more telemetry on what I'm sending them. So on device and hopefully not going anywhere else, that sounds good to me. Speaking of performance, another pretty big claim from the Microsoft keynote was that these Copilot Plus PCs are 58% faster than the M3 MacBook Air. Note it says Air and not the regular M3 put inside the MacBook Pros, but still being on an M3 MacBook Air is a pretty big deal given this first round of new Windows on ARM. And that claim does appear to be supported, at least in some cases, based on this performance chart that was shared by Dave2D on his channel. So for those big four reasons, keeping up with Apple, better efficiency slash battery life, more optimization power to run local AI tasks, and generally faster performance, Microsoft announced their keynote they worked very hard to make Windows 11 play nice with all these ARM chips to gain all of these improvements, and their starting players to help deliver these goals are the Snapdragon X Plus and Snapdragon X Elite processors that will ship in their Surface Pro 11 and Surface Laptop 7 devices around mid-June. If Microsoft shipping a version of the Surface that runs on ARM sounds like a bit of deja vu, you'd be right, because that's exactly what they did back in 2012 when they released the Surface RT, which was their attempt to try and compete with the iPad and releasing an app store only version of the Surface. So it couldn't run any native x86 apps. It could only run what was put in the app store, but unfortunately no one really put anything in the Windows app store. So that sucked. But this time it's different because Windows on ARM will be running full fat Windows and they've done their homework to make sure that major apps like Chrome, Spotify, Zoom, the Microsoft App Suite, many Adobe apps, Blender, the Affinity Suite, DaVinci Resolve, all have native Windows on ARM apps ready to go so that you can use those on day one with this device, which is pretty huge because that was a big part of why Apple's transition to their own silicon worked out so well is because everyone got on that bandwagon pretty quick. So way to go getting that developer support. Develop 
developers, 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 developers. For those concerned about apps that have not yet been ported to Windows on ARM, Microsoft did announce Prism, which is their emulator for running x86 apps on ARM. They didn't say much about it, but they did boldly claim that it was better than Apple's Rosetta 2, so I guess we'll just see how it runs when we get it. I'm also really glad to see that Microsoft looped in other major device manufacturers in this launch of Windows on ARM because it really shows a big vote of confidence they have in this next step in the Windows evolution. They could have co-launched a Surface Pro 11 on Intel and a Surface Pro 11 on ARM and then just kind of marketed that one quietly and then see if people take to it, but then everyone would just dismiss it as yet another Microsoft experiment that will die in a couple of years. But because they looped in the big players, you know, Dell, Lenovo, HP, PA, sir. It's going to be very hard for the mass public to miss this upcoming shift in the Windows evolution. And yeah, I think people are going to catch on. I think Microsoft might actually pull off the shift to ARM this time. And it's funny, it's actually the exact same evolutionary path that Apple took, where they were making their own chips in their iPhones and iPads, realized they'd gotten so good that they may as well just power a laptop. And then they did. And then Microsoft has dipped in and out of the Android game, making things like the Surface Duo phone. And while building those phones, they made partners with Qualcomm and used their Snapdragon processors in those phones. And I'm sure over some coffee, they realized, hey, why don't we take one of these jacked up phone processors and put it in a laptop, make Windows play nice, and uh, get the people what they've been asking for since Apple came out with the M1. Classic Microsoft versus Apple stuff. As for me, I'm currently rocking my Surface Pro 8 running an Intel i5, but given that I'm mostly using my work laptop anyway, I am debating just selling off my Surface right now while it's still a relatively recent device, keeping my Folio keyboard with the Surface Pen because that's compatible with the new Surfaces, and then I'll either wait until round two comes out, you know, like the M2 equivalent after the M1 came out, or wait until some of these Windows on ARM devices show up on refurbished sites or just on good old marketplace. Plus, given that it's such a huge architectural leap, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing to wait until we see some more real world benchmarks when these come out, see how games play, see how our everyday tools play. As a developer, I'm really curious if all of my dev tools are working out of the box or how that will work with the new Prism emulator, or if we need to wait for certain ports to come out. There's just a lot of unknowns with this new architecture jump. Microsoft is saying all the right things. He's saying all the right things. And I'm the most optimistic I've been since any of their Windows on ARM attempts. But again, rear world benchmarks can't beat him. So what do you think? Will you be buying a Windows on ARM device or do you think it's a lot of talk? Let me know in the comments and if you are buying a Windows on ARM device in this first batch, let me know what manufacturer variant you're choosing because uh, maybe you'll help inform my purchase. Thanks so much for watching, subscribe to help out the channel, and we'll see you next week.